Surgery and radiotherapy are the cornerstones of local treatment of children with high-risk neuroblastoma, as you can see here in the regimens from Siopen and Koch. Usually, radiotherapy should be administered after surgery. However, we regularly come across children who had undergone radiotherapy when they are presented for surgery. Recent data from Siopen published by Keith Holmes showed that children with high-risk neuroblastoma benefit from complete resection as opposed to incomplete resection with regard to event-free survival, overall survival, and probability of local progress. In children in which complete resection was achieved, there were fewer severe surgical complications, there were fewer nephrectomies, and there were an equal rate of operation-related deaths. So complete resection does not automatically mean more complications. Recent data from Cork showed that boost radiotherapy to cross residual disease does not improve local control and aggressive local resection remains important for patients with high-risk neuroblastoma. So our aim was to analyze surgical procedures, clinical course, and outcomes of patients with high-risk neuroblastoma undergoing surgery after irradiation. For this purpose, we performed a retrospective review between 2002 and 21 with the outcome measures, tumor and patient-specific data, surgical data, and outcome. In that time period, we operated on over 230 patients with neuroblastoma, 12 of them had high-risk tumors and had undergone irradiation before surgery. So these 12 patients were the ones that we further analyzed. Initial tumor localizations were nine times midline and three times adrenal with encasement. INSS stages were as listed here. Image-defined risk factors were present in 12 patients and MIG and amplification was present in three patients. Reasons for irradiation where in eight patients, an incomplete resection with irradiation. In three patients, tumors were considered unresectable. These children had not undergone central review. And in one patient, he was relapsed after gross total resection plus irradiation. So this final patient was the only one of the 12 in which treatment had been performed according to the protocol. Irradiation type was external beam radiotherapy in all patients with doses between seven and 40 grade. Age at surgery was over 80 months. Operation time was just under five hours. Major vessels encased in the 12 patients are listed here. And you can see that we had to deal with a wide variation of vessels affected. Resection status was gross total in nine patients and below 5% residual in three patients. Vital tumor compounds on histology were found in nine of the 12 patients. Outcome, nine patients are currently without evidence of disease. Stable disease is present in two patients and one patient had a relapse is currently in progressive disease. Follow-up is over 70 months. Intraoperative vascular complications occurred in eight patients. And although this is a small cohort, we have, as I've shown you the Siopen data, we have around 8% 8 8 complication rate in the whole cohort of patients with neuroblastoma. So this is, uh, this is a clear message. Major vascular injuries were present as listed here. And you can see that we had to deal with a wide variety of um, complications intraoperatively. Postoperative complications were one renal artery stenosis and secondary nephrectomy was necessary in one patient. In conclusion, surgery for high-risk neuroblastoma after irradiation is highly complex, and it is a relevant amount present of intraoperative vascular complications. If surgery is performed after irradiations, surgeons should be pre prepared to apply the full scale of techniques regarding vascular management. Incomplete resection plus radiotherapy should not be accepted as concept for local control in children with high-risk neuroblastoma. And after incomplete first resection, patients should undergo central review for possible secondary complete resection at a reference center prior to radiotherapy. Thank you for your attention.